Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for Glimmer Globe Theater's first virtual open mic night. My name is Mike Tamburino, and I'm the manager of performing arts programs here at Fenimore Art Museum. I'll be your host tonight. I don't have to tell you that over the last few weeks, we've all experienced sweeping societal change in just about every aspect of our lives. Some of those who've been most affected are the performers of the world, those whose passions and livelihoods depend on sharing their work with a live audience. We sincerely hope this performance serves as an outlet for performing artists of all types and an escape for those of you who could use one right now. Tonight, we have an exciting lineup of 15 singer-songwriters, actors, poets, and more who are going to be bringing you quite a variety of original pieces and classic works. The theme for this evening, Triumph of the Spirit, celebrates the indomitable strength of human willpower, even in the darkest of times. Tonight, I'm going to be introducing the performances you're about to see, and in some cases, telling you a little bit about the pieces being performed. So, let's jump right in. Starting us off, we have spouses Joanna Arnold and Kim Patterson from Delancey, New York. Joanna will be singing an aria from Handel's Messiah, accompanied by Kim on piano. This particular piece is from toward the end of Handel's magnum opus and is traditionally associated with Easter time.
Next up, we have the charming duo of Bill Ackerbauer and his son Finnegan from Johnstown, New York. They've been writing original songs and making silly videos since isolation began, and this song is one of their originals. Bill is, at the moment, working on a new album of children's music called Chicken Milk and Other Mysteries. Enjoy. Hello, this is Finnegan, and this is Bill, and we put on our music hats, and we're going to sing a song for you. Sing along with us if you want to. Well, a bug has come between us, but we shall not be moved. Let it not demean us, we shall not be moved like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Though we can't be together, we shall not be moved. This won't last forever, we shall not be moved like a tree. Planted by the water, we shall not be moved. Though we are isolated, we shall not be moved. Compassion underrated, we shall not be moved like a tree. Planted by the water, we shall not be moved. Though some try to divide us, we shall not be moved We can't stop the virus We shall not be moved Like a tree Planted by the water We shall not be moved One more time Like a tree Planted by the water We shall not be moved Very nice all right, be safe and healthy, everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, we have something for those of you who need a little more baseball in your life right about now. This is Sharon Rankins Bird, who lives in West Winfield and works in Fly Creek at the United Methodist Church. Sharon is a lifelong baseball fan and every spring dusts off this old favorite of hers for anyone who will listen. Here is Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. Hi, I'm Sharon Rankins Bird. This is Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. And so when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A few of them got up to go in deep despair. The rest, the rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get a whack at that, they'd pick up even money with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, the latter was a cake. And so the multitude in grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake the much despised tore the cover off the ball. When the dust had settled and fans saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hug in third. And from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled through the dell, it knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the back. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. When responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt twas Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt. When the writhing pitcher grabbed the ball into his hip, Defiance gleamed in Casey's eye and a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air. And Casey stood a-watching it, in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. 
From the benches black with people, there came a muffled roar like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, someone shouted from the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him. Had not Casey raised a hand, with a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew, and Casey still ignored it. And the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried Madden thousands, and Echo answered, Fraud! But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw the muscles strain. They knew that Casey would not let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright, and a band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light, and somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Carl Lohenguth, a singer-songwriter living in Cooperstown, New York. In addition to writing and performing solo tracks, Carl often tours around the region with his acclaimed band, Han Zolo. Tonight, he's performing an original song called Amalgam. To hear more, be sure to check out Carl Lohenguth and Han Zolo on SoundCloud. Hey everyone, my name is Carl Lohenguth. Uh, this is my song, Amalgam. Uh, if you'd like to hear more of my music, you can check out my SoundCloud under my name, or you can check out my band, Han Zolo. Here we go. <laughs> Even when I'm old and 
out of range But it don't have to cause me so much pain I can let it lie can let it lie I can let it Thank you Next up, we have Karen Butler, a local actor, director, and playwright who has worked numerous times with Glimmer Globe Theater over the last few years. Tonight, she's going to be performing an original monologue from one of her plays. I'll let her take it from here. I'm Karen Butler. Hi. This is a play of mine. It's from a play of mine called Sape Sape, which refers to Homo sapiens sapiens, and it's about a raucous comedy about the end of the human race. Uh, please imagine that I am part of a jaunty chorus. We are dressed in all the gear, tuxedos, top hats, canes. We're dancing in unison and speaking mainly in, un mainly in unison. <sighs> oh, multiverse, meet homo sapiens, sapiens, ta-da! Big brains on a parade. Can we possibly, oh, can we possibly climb up the consciousness ladder? Can we possibly, can we possibly climb up the ladder, the consciousness ladder? A one and a two. And a three and a four. We huff and we puff and we blow our old house down. We put our hands on the ladder and our feet on the ladder and we climb on to the consciousness ladder. <laughs> we Creatures a climbing the consciousness ladder. We are creatures a climbing the consciousness ladder. We are creatures a climbing the consciousness ladder. Let us climb, let us climb, let us climb. Oh, yeah! The sludge don't got it. No, the sludge don't got it. The horses don't got it. No, the horses don't got it. Even the apes ain't got it. Even the apes ain't got it. But homo sapiens, sapiens do. A diddly do, a diddly do, a diddly diddly do. The dogs don't got it. No, the dogs don't got it. Though we love our dogs. Maybe the dogs do got it. We are creatures a climbing the consciousness ladder. Let us climb, let us climb, let us climb. You think we're a kitten? Let us climb, let us climb, let us climb. Uh, 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 the, the lighting instruments are clicking out. Are they clicking out for Homo sapiens sapiens? What's happening here? Stage manager! We're playing in the dark here. We humans are pretty much playing in the dark here. Will we make it? We will. We will play it with a tap and a shuffle. A shuffle and a song. 
We are a creatures a climbing the consciousness ladder. We are creatures a climbing the consciousness ladder. Let us climb, let us climb, let us climb, let us climb. Oh, all of us here on Mother Earth. Break a leg. Or, as they say in France, Merde! Yada da 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 da, yada da da da, ba ba da 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 ha! Thank you. And now, I'm pleased to introduce Michael Henrici, who, along with his wife Danielle, serves as the consulting co artistic director of Glimmer Globe Theatre. He'll be reading one of his favorite passages from The Deer Slayer by James Fenimore Cooper. An exclamation of surprise broke from the lips of Deerslayer. An exclamation that was low and guardedly made, however, for his habits were much more thoughtful and regulated than those of the reckless hurry. When on reaching the margin of the lake, he beheld the view that unexpectedly met his gaze. It was, in truth, sufficiently striking to merit a brief description. On a level with the point lay a broad sheet of water, so placid and limpid that it resembled a bed of the pure mountain atmosphere, compressed into a setting of hills and woods. Its length was about three leagues, while its breadth was irregular, expanding to half a league or even more opposite to the point, and contracting to less than half that distance more to the southward. Of course, its margin was irregular, being indented by bays and broken by many projecting low points. At its northern or nearest end it was bounded by an isolated mountain, lower land falling off east and west, gracefully relieving the sweep of the outline. Still, the character of the country was mountainous, high hills or low mountains rising abruptly from the water on quite nine-tenths of its circuit. The exceptions, indeed, only served a little to vary the scene, and even beyond the points of the shore that were comparatively low, the background was high, though more distant. But the most striking peculiarities of this scene were its solemn solitude and sweet repose. On all sides, wherever the eye turned, nothing met it but the mirror-like surface of the lake, the placid view of heaven, and the dense setting of woods. So rich and fleecy were the outlines of the forest that scarce an opening could be seen. The whole visible earth, from the rounded mountain top to the water's edge, presenting one unvaried hue of unbroken verdure. As if vegetation were not satisfied with a triumph so complete, the trees overhung the lake itself, shooting out towards the light and there were miles along its eastern shore where a boat might have pulled beneath the branches of dark Rembrandt-looking hemlocks, quivering aspens, and melancholy pines. In a word, the hand of man had never yet defaced or deformed any part of this native scene, which lay bathed in the sunlight, a glorious picture of affluent forest grandeur softened by the balminess of June, and relieved by the beautiful variety afforded by the presence of so broad an expanse of water. Next, I'm happy to introduce Leroy and Lucian Lytle of Cooperstown, New York, performing one of their original songs. These two have always been fascinated by the works of Django Reinhardt, and this particular song came about when they started to wonder what would it have been like if he wrote lyrics to his music. Together, Leroy and Lucian show us just what that might have been like with their song Red Rose Dress. Uh, this is one we wrote called Red Rose Dress. I was just a young man, my mama said to me Be aware of those pretty things you mean There's a devil in this world, sure as the sky's up above So take your soul and cut your body free With a chip on my shoulder and a suitcase in my hand Ten dollar shoes upon my feet Well, I left that town As the sun was setting down Ain't nothing in the world that could stop me Was 
was a moonless night in a roadside salon. She was leaning on the jukebox, humming the blues. And she stood up to me, and she yells me the dance. With all my will, I could not refuse. That night I danced with the devil. She wore a real rose dress, and she wrapped herself around me, and she killed me with a kiss. Yeah, she laid me down to sleep. She took my soul to keep with a smile and the sweetest moan. Then she bent down low and she whispered in my ear, said, "Hell will be your new home." That night I danced with the devil. She wore a real And she built herself around me, and she killed me with a kiss. Go heed my call, boys. Don't do as I did. Take my words, I do not confess. There's a devil in this world, sure as the skies up above, and she wears a real rose dress. Next up, I'm honored to introduce Kirsten Malloy of South Courtright, New York. She's going to be reading an original poem she wrote recently, alongside some visually stunning footage filmed on her property. I walk amidst abandoned fields and country roads. Time has seemed to stop in the world of manly maneuverings. This was a wish I wished for long ago. Now it is finally here. While life as we know it has changed, the seasons continue on their cyclical path. Seeds sprout into plants, April showers bringing May flowers, and my own body responds naturally without hesitation, clearing the debris of yesteryear, making way for the new, clearing the land for what may come. A sprout of hope remains in this uncertain future, but while I plant my seeds of hope, awaiting their blossom and bloom, I remain in waiting, excited, uncertain, and, and victorious. There is no doubt of a brighter day, a more melodious song to play, a tomorrow that shall come in time, altered anew and fresh as the dew in spring. And now we have Samuel and Lucian Lytle performing more original music for you. First up, we have Samuel Lytle with his original song, Join Us in the Sun, which sees him on vocals as well as playing multiple other instruments. Then, in a dramatic change of pace, he and his brother Lucian will play us out with a traditional Celtic fiddle tune that has been part of their lives for quite a long time. Enjoy. Death 
embrace. Don't be scared, we're just having fun. Don't you run away, join us in the sun. Don't be scared, no, we're just having fun. Don't you run away, join us in the sun, yeah. Oh my God, oh my Clouds my mind. Join us among the serpents. Leave your troubled life behind. Everything you thought you knew about to disappear right before your eyes. And you gon' realize this world ain't nothing but a load of lies, yeah. Don't be scared. We're just having fun. Don't you run away. Join us in the sun. Don't be scared. No, we're just having fun. Next up, we have local choreographer, dance instructor, and actor, Michalina Velarde from Pittsfield, New York, whose performance shows us what it might have looked like if Helena from A Midsummer Night's Dream ran a YouTube vlog. I am out of breath of this fun cheese. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy as who knew? Wheresoever she lies, for she has blessed and attractive eyes. Look at her eyes so bright, not with salt tears. If so, my eyes are often more washed than hers. No, no, I am ugly as a bear, for beasts that meet me run away with fear. Then glass of mine made me compare with her as sphere eating. You know, let me tell you. But who is here? Lysander! Bless you. On the ground? Dead? 
or asleep. No blood, no wounds. Lysander, if you wave, good sir, away. Now, I'd like to introduce Danielle Henrici, one of Glimmer Globe Theatre's consulting co-artistic directors, performing one of Shakespeare's most famous poems, Sonnet 18, alongside her children, Dashiell and Vivian. Hope you enjoy. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art so lovely and what Rough winds do shake the darling buds of death, and summer sleeps have all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his cold complexion And every fair from fair sometime declines by chance or nature's changing for some dream. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou. Shall the thread thou want rest in his shade when in eternal lights to time thou grows? So long as men can breathe, the eyes can see. So long lives this. Next, we have a couple pieces of classic literature for you. First up is Susan Mills from Utica, New York, performing Lewis Carroll's fantastical poem, Jabberwocky. Twas brillig, and the slightly toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrow groves, and mome rays outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the firmiest bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with his head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kalu kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig and the slightly toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. O oh, mimsy were the burrow groves and the moan rays outgrave. Next, we have Rachel of Oneonta, New York, with an excerpt from Spoon River Anthology by Edgar Lee Masters. This is the free verse epitaph of Lydia Puckett, resident of Spoon River. Noel Poheimer ran away to the war the day before Colonel Trannery swore out a warrant before Justice Arnett for stealing hogs. But that's not why he turned a soldier. He caught me running with Lucius Atherton. We quarreled and I told him never again to cross my path. Then he stole the hogs and ran away to the war. Back of every soldier is a woman. Our next musician is Lissa Sadoli an actor, director, and singer-songwriter from Oneonta, New York. She's going to be performing an original song called Find Someone. Hi, my name is Lissa Sidoli, and I wrote this song about a year or two ago, and it's called 
find someone. The ruins of my life recede and invade. I sit at the park and watch the children play. I've been told I'm in pain because I cannot rescue the child I was. Long gone souls, they come to me in heartless dreams, cruel fantasies, you lose someone, they're gone for good, find your way, find your way back home. Wake up. Push the dark deep night aside, crescent moon on the river glows. Why, oh, why does the sun seem to want to hide? Dawn comes so slow, dawn comes so slow. Long gone souls, they come to me in heartless dreams, cruel fantasies you lose. Someone they're gone for good. Find your way, find your way back home. I open a window and I breathe in the air. I close my eyes and you're standing there. Florida breeze, blow the night sky away, dry my tears and bring me day. Long gone souls, they come to me in heartless dreams, cruel fantasies, you lose someone, they're gone for good. Find your way, find your way back home. Find someone, dare to love again your broken heart, just wants to mend. Gather all the love, all the love that you've ever known, and heal the heart that brings you home. Find someone, dare to love again your broken heart, just wants to mend. Gather her all the love you've ever known. Heal the heart. Heal the heart that brings you home. Find someone there to love again. Your broken heart just wants to mend. Gather her all the love you've ever known. Heal the heart, heal the heart that brings you home. Next up is Carolyn Christ, an author, farmer, and actor from New Berlin, New York, performing a piece from her upcoming book, Room Service, as the character COVID Shut-In. Carrie checked into the Marriott on December 22nd after a long, hard cry, followed by a 10-hour drive. Her boyfriend had backed out on the trip at the last minute. She calls her brother's house, where her mother is warehoused, and treated like a piece of old, broken, useless furniture. No one answers the phone. Typical. She and her brother had a huge argument about having Mom visit her in upstate New York. So now the petty bastard won't even pick up the phone. Or, like so many times before, her brother's family has left Mom alone. She didn't want to get arrested by just showing up and walking in. She was a teacher, a public school teacher, and needed to preserve her job. Carrie texts her BFE, best friend ever. Hey, I'm here. And the reply shocked her. Great, relax. Order room service. That's it. No schedule of events. 
No, I'll see you at this time or that time. Nothing. Order room service? Carrie had only ordered room service once in her life, and that was after last year's hard cry Christmas Eve when her BF, boyfriend, found the sheets and luxury pillows more exciting than her on this annual trek to visit her mother, who lived with her brother, who treated her like furniture. But Carrie had to protect her job. Last Christmas Eve, Greg slept all day and well into the evening. Carrie was starving for attention, for compassion. Oh, yeah, for food. Nothing was open. Not one of her five brothers or their wives thought to invite her and Greg to dinner. With no other option, Carrie ordered room service. This Christmas, Carrie was raw emotionally. Her doctor and her BF insisted she get therapy after one of her brothers tried to commit suicide. Carrie finally agreed and went kicking and screaming. Her second appointment with the therapist was December 21st. The pronouncement that the BF wasn't coming with her was December 20th, and the 10-hour drive to Northern Virginia was December 22nd. She needed someone to take her in and hold her heart and hand and tell her everything was okay. She collapsed on the hotel room floor as she read the text. Get room service. Carrie held on to the only tangible thing in her life at that moment. She was good at doing what she was told. She studied the room service menu for an hour. Just couldn't make up her mind. She determined it was the price tag that was the barrier. Carrie just couldn't justify having food delivered to her room for such crazy prices. Finally, she washed up, brushed her hair, and went down to the hotel restaurant. She had an average meal from an average server with a less than average Pinot Grigio. She ordered two pieces of chocolate cake to go and asked for two forks. The bill arrived with the neatly packaged cakes, $50.37. Tomorrow I'm getting room service. It's cheaper, she said to the two pieces of cake. She knew she'd eat alone in her room. Our penultimate performance is by Steve Hiscox of Oneonta, New York. He'll be performing a monologue he wrote years ago during his incarceration. This piece, his final journal entry, is called The Last Supper. July 6th, 1994. It was my last meal at Morgantown. They served one of my favorites, chicken fried steak. On my right sat O'Brien, a former DEA agent from Boston, doing six years for either selling confiscated dope or keeping the confiscated cash. Probably both. Obi taught my French class. To my left sat Jay, a former pharmacist from Philly, who's been down for three years on a four-year bit for Medicare fraud. Jay was my weightlifting partner. Today we did buys and tries. Tomorrow is chest, but I'll be on my way home by then. Mel sat across from me. He's a former stockbroker from Baltimore doing three years for insider trading. He teaches my bridge class. Last month, Mel found Jesus. So now he's a born again Christian. What the hell? It's a way to cope. We were eating our dessert when Longo stopped by. Dessert was desert storm cake. Really, it's government surplus Cake comes in tins. It's left over from the war in Iraq. It's a little dry. Uh, anyhow, Longo, a former cab driver slash drug dealer from Detroit, is doing the five-year minimum for conspiracy to distribute marijuana. Longo manages our slow-pitch softball team. We won a big game last night. I had two hits and three ribbies. Longo filled me in on his plan to draft a new inmate to replace me at first base. That's how he copes 
by focusing on roster moves, lineups, strategy. The playoffs start next week without me. The day ended with a farewell Euchre game. It was me and Big Dan, a sheet metal worker from Detroit's Upper Peninsula, against Lewis, a former IRS agent from Cincinnati, and John, a magazine publisher from Chicago. Lewis, the IRS agent, a.k.a. the Cincinnati Kid, is about six months short on his bank fraud sentence. The Kid and I, both former cross-country runners, have been training together on the quarter-mile cinder track up behind the gym. I left the Kid my air conditioner, a six-inch clamp-on electric fan selling for $14.95 at the commissary. John, the publisher, He's doing 21 months for tax evasion. His son-in-law is serving the same sentence at another federal prison camp up in Allentown. Their wives are back home running the magazine, but they're both facing 12-month sentences as soon as their husbands get out. I set up John to replace me as the new clerk in the welding shop. The pay may be only 37 cents an hour, but... The job comes with an IBM KX E3000 electric typewriter. John can't wait. The only other typewriter on the compound, available to inmates that is, is in the law library and there's always a waiting list. So now it's almost midnight and here I sit writing this final entry in my daily journal. I've been counting down the days for a year, and now it's finally over. I'm all packed. <sighs> I won't sleep much. It'll be the last night I spend in a bunk bed. I'll be up early, I'll grab a coffee on the main line, and then go over to R&D to turn in my bedroll and my khakis. And then, I'll go home. When I got here, I was kind of scared of serving a year in prison. Now I'm kind of scared to go home where I'll meet my wife and kids. They'll be getting back a husband and a father who's an ex-con. What will they say to their friends and coworkers and classmates? Most of my old friends didn't know how to relate to me for the eight months I was awaiting sentencing and incarceration. How will they react to me when I get home? I'm broke. I'll need a job. Who's going to hire an ex-con? Will I have what it takes to reinvent myself? I did it here. I worked it out. I managed to turn my sentence into a sabbatical. I did my time. I didn't let my time do me. Can I reinvent myself again? A Roman philosopher wrote, Home is where the heart is. Thomas Wolfe wrote, you can't go home again. My wife picks me up in the morning. I'm going home. Finally, we're going to let Andy Alban close out our open mic night with a piece of original poetry. This poem, titled Quarantine, was written as she reflected on times before the shutdown. She hopes that this work will resonate with people and help them remember that it's okay to feel scared and uncertain and that this too shall pass. Three months, nine weeks, 63 days, 1,512 hours, 131,400 minutes. But who's counting? Budding branches greet me on quiet mornings. Starlings, robins, doves. Swoop, coo, flicker, dive. Beating wings and scattered songs. Cloudy, cool. Snow, mist. Sun, rain, wind. All of the seasons have shown their faces here. Tyrannical inconsistent, akin to the times. Missing friends, family, co-workers, students, connection. 
It's the small things. Two cups of coffee every morning. Laughs. Tears. Politics over puzzles. Jigsaws knit together. A picture appears. Happy people. Busy streets. Warm houses. Picturesque. Pictures are our lifeline. Locked in a screen. Kisses blown in binary. Baby squeals and mother's tears. I love yous. I miss yous. We'll be together again soon. Like plants after winter, persisting toward the sun, we stretch to those who bring us light. Brighter days and lessons learned, hands to hold, lips to kiss, food to share. Quiet moments shared together. They're there, those gems in the dark. Each day we get closer to uncovering them. Do not give up, do not give in. We are waiting for each other to see the sun share the earth for bonds stronger than 10,000 crowns could hope to shake. Thanks so much to all of you for joining us at our first virtual open mic night. I hope it made you smile, laugh, and reflect a bit on the extraordinary talent present right here in our community. Just remember that despite the circumstances of the world, even if we're not seeing each other face to face, we as the performers will always be making something new. And if we at Glimmer Globe Theater can help bring it to you, we will. Thank you. And I hope to see you at our next virtual event, as well as our next live event. Stay tuned for updates.